I'm Mark Vins, and it's time to get burned by a fireworm. Here goes nothing. <gasps> ah! Mmm, that is really bad. Oh man, it is getting intense. Ah! As steam rises off a frigid ocean, and light reveals a jagged maze of shoreline, we begin our search for a fire below the surface. The smoldering abyss created by this uncharacteristically cold Florida day is a fitting backdrop for the home of a mysterious creature that possesses one of the fiercest stings beyond the tide. Hundreds of thousands of species of worms can be found all over our planet. And while some of them are well known for their bizarre abilities, the fireworm stands alone. This bizarre porcupine-like worm that feasts on coral and small crustaceans is covered in thousands of sharp spines that can ignite burning pain with just the slightest of touch. This armor fends off predators so well, almost nothing will eat them. And from the reefs of the Caribbean to the rock pools of the Mediterranean, and sometimes depths of up to 300 meters, the fireworm is spreading rapidly into new environments. And so too, is the legend of its fiery sting. In this video, I will put myself to the ultimate test to learn about this marine oddity by enduring its painful sting twice. I will suffer through this experience in hopes to answer the ongoing scientific question, is the sting of the bearded fireworm actually venomous or is it simply just a flesh wound? Do not attempt what you are about to see. This is going to be extremely painful. There it is. All right, it's time to go get stung. Here we go. That is a very good sized fireworm. And oh boy, does it look intimidating. And yes, welcome to another sting experiment here on the Brave Wilderness Channel. This time, we're going to attempt to solve a mystery a bit of a scientific question as to whether or not the fireworm is indeed venomous. All right, there we go. You can see the worm so much better. This is indeed a true worm. You can actually see the segments lining the entire top, and it's a lot more closely related to a sandworm and a bloodworm than some of the other marine organisms out there on the reef. But unlike most worms, it has very unique defense mechanisms. There are thousands and thousands of these small, tiny hair-like spines lining the worm's body. In fact, they release so easily, I can actually see a lot of these spines floating in the water above it. This is where it gets its name, the fireworm, because those spines are so sharp and easily projected, anything that even brushes up against the worm's body gets inflicted by a searing pain. I have heard from many reputable sources that this is worse than a lionfish sting, and it's worse than a man of war sting, and all the other stings in this marine environment behind me. You'll notice firstly that it's very colorful. That aposomatic coloration indicates that it is extremely toxic. Not only potentially venomous, but it's also poisonous. Being poisonous and venomous are two very different things. Poison has to be absorbed or ingested into the body, where venom is actually injected by means of a tooth, a stinger, or in this case, a spine. But beyond the toxins that we know are contained within this worm, let's talk a little bit about the symptoms from the sting of a fireworm. And this is from a scientific journal written in 2017. Acute, intense stinging pain, itchiness, numbness, and swelling that can last up to several weeks. Symptomatic reactions such as nausea, cardiac, and respiratory problems can occur. Dang, that would be bad. And it's so interesting to me that even the scientific community, the scientists that study these creatures, haven't been able to figure out definitively if they're venomous or not. So with that being said, it's now time to conduct our sting experiment. And here's how it's going to go down. While stinging myself twice, once on each arm might sound crazy, it will be absolutely necessary to conduct this sting experiment, where I will treat one arm as if the fireworm sting is venomous and the other as if it were not. 
In theory, if venom is present, the two separate treatments should result in different outcomes, in both pain and visible damage. Okay, I'm about to take one of the most painful stings of all the marine ecosystem. Oh, look at it flare up. Wow, look at that defense mechanism. Oh my goodness. See all those spines flare out, ready to eject? And it's not going to take much, just the slightest brush up against the fireworm and it's gonna be instantaneous. Oh man, I am nervous. I am feeling the nerves go now. Oh boy, all right, let's put my arm in the sting tank. Okay. I'm Mark Vins, and it's time to get burned by a fireworm. Here goes nothing. Oh, that looks bad. Here we go. On three, ready? One, two, three. Ah! Oh yeah, he got me. He got me. Oh! Yeah, I could definitely, I can feel it. Ooh, yeah, it's almost like uh, little electrical pulses going through the skin. You can even see, oh wow, like right away, there are all kinds of spines up and down my skin. But man, it is starting to intensify. It's like little shock pulses, like pop, 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 going through my skin. All right, this is starting to hurt. Oh man, like, oh yeah. That, that super burns. That burns. Holy cow. All right, I'm gonna do the second one, guys, because I don't know how much longer this is gonna be tolerable. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. That. Ah. Woo. Okay, guys, we gotta do the second sting fast. Woo. All right, here we go. Sting number two from the fireworm. Here we go. Right arm in the sting tank. Time for my second dose of fireworm spikes. Here we go, you guys ready? Oh, yep, I can see them. Oh yeah, all through there, same spot. This arm, oh yeah, you can start to see my arms drying out. See all the quills, see all the spines, all the redness. This one's about to look just the same. All right, now, whew, taking the stings. Let's get the remedies out. Oh, don't do that. Don't, oh man, that hurt worse. Yeah, do not blow on him. Oh, oh, searing like a hot needle. I tell you what, guys, I can tell right away, this isn't just irritant. There's something else going on, for sure. Woo! <laughs> oh man, you can really see the inflammation starting over here. Ah! Oh, mighty. First thing you want to do if you are stung by a fireworm is nothing. You do not want to rub the spines in deeper with your other hand because you're only going to inflict more pain onto your hand itself. What we want to do right now is wait for my arms to dry and then we are going to use the adhesive technique to remove as many of those spines as we possibly can. Ah, yeah, man, that's, that is bad. That is really bad. Oh man, it is getting intense. Ah, oh. The adhesive technique we're going to do on both arms. This is the same thing you're going to want to do to the stings if they're venomous or not. I'm gonna try to rip out as many of those spines as I can. Hopefully this causes not too much irritation. It gives me a little bit of relief. Here we go. Oh, that is tender to the touch. Oh, ready? Okay, I've got the adhesive pretty well on there. One, two. Oh, yeah. Woo, okay, I got a lot of them actually here. Man, I taped it a good job. At this point, we're gonna go in for side two. Here we go. Same thing. One, two, three. <gasps> Mm. That really hurt. The good news is I think I got them all. Yep, you can see, got the spines out again. Now comes the second step, and this is only for the venom treatment. Like we said in the beginning, one side 
we're treating as if it's venomous and one side we're not. So the right side now is totally done, but the left side we are gonna mark with a V. You may have noticed the pain I'm experiencing is coming in waves, which is another indication that something chemically and perhaps venomous is going on. But to measure the visual reaction, I will mark one arm with a V for venom treatment and then draw boundaries on both sting sites to see if the swelling expands or contracts over the next 24 hours. Let's go ahead and treat the left side as if this was venomous. First thing we wanna do is we wanna apply some household white vinegar. Vinegar has the ability to render any venom that would be on the surface of my skin inert. Oh man, it feels cold to the touch and that actually feels good. And we're gonna leave this vinegar on here for another five to 10 minutes and then we're gonna to go to step two of the venom treatment. That is hot water. Oh, yeah. Wow. So far, even from the treatments alone, every indication, signs are pointing towards venom. The heat affects the actual structure of the venom itself, rendering it almost harmless and a lot easier for your body to digest and take care of. Uh, at least one of my arms is already feeling better. Can't say it for the right arm. That arm still hurts a lot. Oh, you do not want to experience the pain of a fireworm firsthand like this. This is bad. All right, well, there we have it. Usually at this point in the video, I would give you my thoughts and we'd see you on the next adventure, but we really want to see how this experiment plays out overnight. So I'm going to head back to camp and I'll see you guys again in the AM so we can compare both of these stings next to each other and see if there's any difference. I tried everything I could to put the pain out of my mind. But just laying there in my tent, my arms ached with increasing waves of agony as sweat poured out of my body all night long. Morning couldn't come soon enough because I knew the only thing that would make the pain go away was time itself. I can tell you this much, I am still in quite a bit of pain and even wearing this shirt hurts. Like any contact with the stings feels terrible. And you get this, it actually rained last night, so I got water in my tent on top of it all. So while I am feeling a little bit better, the sting damage is actually pretty significant. The results visually speak for themselves. The arm that we treated is almost healed at this point. I mean, you have some localized redness here. It still hurts, it's not done, but visually, you can see that the swelling is down. The actual inflammation is contracted to within the site from yesterday where the arm on the right has expanded beyond the site from yesterday. And the inflammation is serious. It is very tender to the touch, much more so than the arm on the left. There is some other evidence that I wanna talk about that is really important to my ultimate decision of determining the venomous nature of this animal. First thing is the obvious feeling, the sensation of the sting itself. It was a delayed reaction. When I first made contact with my skin in the tank, I almost didn't feel like anything was even happening. But within a minute, I felt that first sign of intense burning and it only got worse. It built and built and built until on both sting sites, I felt like there was almost like an electrical fire underneath my skin. But this arm, the one we treated like it was a venomous sting, I actually saw these sites move. And we have a picture to show you. So you can see there that it was well beyond this mark. That is a very interesting indication that there was something chemically happening underneath the skin and moved that sting site beyond that line and then back again. I would have to say, given all of the evidence of this sting test, I am convinced that this is indeed a venomous creature. And yes, being stung or burned by a fireworm not only hurts, but is the result of envenomation. Oh, right there. You see it moving? That is the stonefish. And I never would have seen that fish if it didn't give itself away by moving. Holy smokes. Now these fish are so toxic, they don't really have a flight response. I'm gonna attempt to catch the most toxic fish in the world with my bare hands. All right, here we go. Wow, there it is. That 
is the stonefish. Look at that tide pool monster. I can't believe we found one. I mean, it looks like a living rock. I never would have spotted this fish if it didn't move. The fact that it swam a little bit there is the only reason I was able to catch this fish. And you can see how docile this fish is. It knows just how toxic it can be. Wow. But the table is set for what will be likely the worst sting I ever take. Placing the stonefish in the tank hit my nerves hard. I'm about to get stung by a stonefish. Stonefish stings are said to be one of the most painful experiences a human can endure. And I've already experienced my fair share of fish stings. One from the most common fish sting, which is the lionfish. Ah, oh, and the other from the scorpion fish, which is the most toxic fish sting in North America. Oh, yeah, he got me. Oh. Each sting was painful, but I was certainly able to tough it out with basic treatment. However, each of those fish fall far short of the danger from the stonefish. Not every day you get to carry around the world's most toxic fish in a tank. This fish might just have the worst sting in the entire animal kingdom. Man, my nerves are firing right now. Just looking at this fish is so incredibly cool. Look at all the growths all over its body definitely earns its name, the stonefish, a master of camouflage. All right, let's go hands-on once again with the stonefish. The reason I can handle this fish is because it can only sting from the spines on top. Wow. This fish has developed the most potent fish toxin in the world. The toxin is only to defend itself. Unfortunately, as you can see, it is so docile that it's very easy for people to step on these fish. And that is the most common way people are stung by the stonefish. The toxin of this fish not only induces extraordinary pain, it can actually cause muscle spasms and eventual paralysis. And there have even been reported deaths from stonefish stings. But now I think it's time to see how this fish injects its venom. I'm going to just pour out this water. Gonna use this little tank here as a platform. This fish is perfectly fine being out of the water for extended periods of time because they've adapted the ability to actually hold water in their gills. It's not uncommon to see stonefish just laying on the rocks in these tide pools. So in the little bit of time that we have it here in front of the cameras, totally fine. All right, so I brought with me a piece of neoprene. I'm going to use this piece of neoprene to simulate skin so I can show you what would happen if you stepped on the stonefish. This animal has the ability to fire its venom into the wound created by its spine. That's why people who are envenomated and step on these stonefish end up in such a bad situation. It's not only that it's the most toxic venom, it's that you also get the most volume. Look at how sharp that spine is. Okay, in order to do this properly, I do need to get out some eye protection, so I'm gonna do that quickly. This venom, it has enough toxin in it to cause vision problems and perhaps even blindness. All right, let's see in slow motion how these spines inject venom. I'll do these top two, you guys ready? Here they go. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Look at that. And it's like blue. Holy cow, look at how much venom just came out of that fish. And let's do another one, do it one more time. Oh my gosh, guys, the spines are blue. And once those spines are out, they stay out and they're ready to defend. All right, let me try these uh, spines on the back here. One, two, three. Wow, that is what would be inside of your foot if you were to step on a stonefish. Now, it will regenerate its venom. This doesn't hurt the fish at all. And you can see these sheaths will just slide right back up. But holy cow, I gotta take a minute and process what I just saw. Oh, that is bad. I won't lie, I'm getting pretty nervous right now. This is something you should never do. I've consulted experts, people who have been stung. I've done my research, I've done my homework, but even still, I am extremely nervous about what is about to happen. It's said that this is the most painful sting in the world. Wish me luck. The moment has come. 
it's time to be stung by the world's most toxic fish. I am borderline terrified. I've thought long and hard about whether or not to even go through with this, but I'm doing this today because through my research on the stonefish, I have found a lot of misinformation out there. There is a lot of stories that pretty much describe certain death if you're stung by a stonefish, and that's just simply not the case. While this toxin in the base of its spines is extremely potent, it is thermal liable. So if treated properly and if needed with medical attention, you will survive the sting of a stonefish. Most of the victims that end up dying from stonefish stings, but has more to do with the pain and shock that leads to cardiac arrest. This venom is meant to cause you pain, but I have brought the antidote with me today. A thermos filled with hot water that's around 114 degrees Fahrenheit, a compress to hold over the wound, and then of course, if I do go into any state of anaphylactic shock, I always carry with me an EpiPen. We are about three minutes drive from an emergency room. So even if the worst case scenario does unfold today, I should have plenty of time to be able to get to emergency medical attention. All right, my plan today is to take a micro dose of stonefish venom. The venom from that neoprene trial is already coating the spikes. So they are locked and loaded, ready to go. When it's all said and done, this should be just extraordinarily painful for me and hopefully very educational for you. This is going to likely be the worst sting that I ever take. I'm Mark Vins, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the stonefish, the most toxic fish in the world. All right, I'm gonna go with this front spine here. Ready? This spine. On three. One. Two. Three. Ah! Mmm. Yep. Mmm. I already feel burn. I could feel it spreading up my finger right now. And it does not feel good. Wow, the tide is coming in. All right, here, let's, mm, hang on. Mm, let's move out of here, the tide's rolling. You okay, Mark? Yeah, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna come over here. Andrew, put the fish back in the tank, man. Mm. Oh, right there is where, where the spine went in. God, immediate fire spreading up my fingers. I can already feel it in these, these three. Mmm. Do you help Mark or are you okay? No, I'm okay. I'm okay right now. It's like a different magnitude of pain. It is like throbby, achy. Mm. Hang on, I gotta walk it off. Yeah. I'm gonna try to tough it out for a little bit. I wanna see how far the venom spreads before I start applying the first aid. This is borderline unbearable. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Oof. Let me know when you need the water, Mark. I'm just like, it's making me nervous. Mm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, definitely drew a little bit of blood. Oh, and it is hot. It's like closing my hand is becoming hard. Mmm. Ah, yeah, it's spreading. It's like all up the back of my hand now. Mmm. Mm. I think I need to go for the hot water, guys. I don't want this to spread anymore. I'm going to the hot water. Mm. There we go. Stonefish is good. Now I need to fix myself. So this hot water will actually stop the venom from working and should help my pain. Mm. Every bit as painful as advertised. I never want to do that again. And I need to get more hot water on this sting. And hopefully the pain subsides, but it's still increasing for me. Tingling pain continued to build and spread up through my shoulder all the way to my neck. Even a month after the sting, I still have numbness and tingles in my fingers. The immediate pain wasn't enough to send me to the hospital, but as we released the stonefish, I could imagine what would happen if a full load of its venom were to go in my foot that instance would send you directly to the hospital. And if you're ever stung, please, you should seek medical attention as soon as possible. Although it looks like one, the Portuguese man-of-war is not actually a jellyfish. It is a siphonophore. 
Unlike a jellyfish, which can survive on their own, siphonophores are a group of colonized organisms made up of cloned cells. Each group are responsible for specific tasks to keep the man of war alive. Some cells form the float, which suspend the organism on the water's surface and create a sail to move with the wind. Others are responsible for hunting prey, and this is where we meet the venom-filled nematocyst. These small but potent cells cover the man-o-war's stinging tentacles by the thousands, and within each is a spiral-shaped barb which literally blasts out when making contact with its victim. When these barbs penetrate the skin, they release a cocktail of enzymes very similar to snake venom. These enzymes are designed to incapacitate prey, and in my case, will cause instantaneous pain. This animal is notorious for its sting. In fact, it stings thousands of people here in the state of Florida every single year. I luckily have never taken a sting until now. Time for me to take two stings from the Portuguese man -o -war. In order to compare the effectiveness of the most famous remedies for being stung by a man -o -war, today I'll be taking two stings side by side on the same arm. One of them to be treated with urine, the controversial yet universally accepted cure to all marine creature stings, and on the other, I will spray white vinegar, the suggested first aid from a University of Hawaii research article. Then, while enduring the venom from both stings, I will attempt to describe which of these two remedies relieves my pain the best. Two sting sites, two different antidotes, which one works the best? You're about to find out. Please do not attempt to do what I'm doing here today. Um, oh gosh, I'm so nervous I can't even get a hold of it. Okay guys, I think I got it. You ready? Ready. Okay, here we go. About to take, oh God, that looks horrible. Whew, man, I'm getting nervous. Here we go. About to take two stings from the Portuguese man of war. You guys, get your shots ready, because this is only going to happen one time. Tear of the ocean. Here we go. One, two, three. Ah! Yep. It's getting me. Oh, yeah. I can feel it. Ah! Ooh. Ooh. That's like electric. Yeah. That's one. Wow. It burns right away. Okay. Second sting. I got to do this fast before that gets too bad. Ready, guys? Ready? All right. One, two, Second thing, three. Ah, yep. Oh, man, that one nailed me. Oh. Mm. Okay, yep. So, instant, uh, almost tingly, electrical feeling sting. A lot different than a bee sting or a wasp. Oh man, those are really getting in there. I could feel it now. Now, likely there are still hundreds of nematocysts that are, oh yeah. They are erupting as I'm talking to you right now. I can feel them individually firing, like pow, 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 like a series of bullets going into my skin. Woo, yeah. Hmm, yeah. You can see it getting red on both sides. Now, stink site one up here at the top, stink site two down here at the bottom. I can actually see remnants from the tentacles and those likely have many nematocysts in them. And it is getting worse and worse with every second. Oh man, this is bad. You do not want to get stung by a Portuguese man of war. If I were a fish right now, I'd be in big trouble. In fact, I would likely already be in complete paralysis and this man of war would be reeling me in for dinner. Okay, let the healing begin as they say. All right, there's two steps to this. One, spray on the agent, two, Use a plastic card because you want to scrape off as many of those nematocysts that have yet to explode as you can. First sight, vinegar. Here we go. Okay. Oh yeah, smells like vinegar. Now the one I'm dreading. Gross. This is so disgusting. This is so nasty. All right, you guys are a little downwind, so you might want to prepare to duck and cover. All right, here we go. Oh man, I don't want to splash my face. Oh, 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 it stinks. Oh, okay, that's enough. Scraping off those active nematocysts is certainly part of the equation, so you don't want to forget that step. I can actually see my skin pulsing. You guys see my skin going up and down there? All the nerves in my arm right now are probably just screaming like, ah, intruder, we have venom. I feel so much better already. It feels like I'm on the road to healing. Man, it still burns though. So now it's just more of the burning. 
Okay, yeah, I think I'm, I'm ready to make a, a declaration of sorts at this point. Vinegar, not only more sanitary, but definitely wins the contest. This is by far the least of the two when it comes to pain. The urine sight, not only is it absolutely disgusting, but it definitely burns a little worse. And I could definitely feel a distinction between the two. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it vinegar is the definitive antidote that you want to use if you want to neutralize stinging cells on your skin. Urine, not your best friend when it comes to a jellyfish sting or a man of war sting for that matter. And there is one last step that will truly alleviate the pain symptoms that I'm feeling in my arm. Good old fashioned hot water. The reason hot water is the ultimate antidote to a man of war sting is because the heat from the water will actually denature the proteins in the venom rendering them inert, completely harmless. And then it's just up to my body and my immune system to do the cleanup work and I'll be as good as new. Oh my gosh. Guys, this is, I've never had a hot conference feel so good. Like immediate relief. And I hope everybody watching not only enjoyed this little experiment, but learned something to take home with you. Don't use urine, use vinegar to treat jellyfish stings or man of war stings. And at the end of the day, hot compress is going to be your real solution. While I did experience slight discomfort for the next few hours, the scrape and heat treatment reduced my pain to that of a mild sunburn. And by the next day, nearly all signs of redness had vanished and I was as good as new. So next time you're on the beach and you see a man of war, avoid it. But just in case you don't, some white vinegar and a hot compress seem to do the trick. So yeah, you should leave your pee in the toilet. We're going to attempt to recreate a swarm of ants on the top of my hand and then see if I can withstand their bites for 60 seconds. Please do not attempt to recreate what you're about to see. Matt, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. 60 seconds. All right, here we go. I'm Mark Vins and I'm about to enter the bite zone with the leaf cutter ant. Here we go, on three. One, two, three. Ah, yeah, that one's got me. Uh, all right, they're all in, start the clock. 60 seconds starting. Ah, ah, oh, they're breaking the scoot. Ah, ah, man, that hurts. They're just annihilating my skin, just popping holes. Ah! Oh! Oh, it's like razor pinches. Ah! They're just like slicing my through my skin like butter. Oh, give me a countdown. It's gotta be close. Alright, ten. Eight. Five. Don't move your hand. Three. Two. One. Ah, get them off, get them off, get them off. God, they won't come off. Ah, ah, they just bite harder. Oh, get off me. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Ah. Oh. oh, that was so bad. That was so bad. Oh, ah. So many bites. That was. So much more intense than I thought. I thought there was no possible way that a leaf cutter ant bite could even come close to comparing, but I don't know. Bullet ant stings up next, but that's the most uncomfortable thing I have ever experienced. The sheer willpower to just like look away and let that happen. I hope you guys got good shots because I never want to go through that ever again. All right, so let these ants go and get back on the hunt. Even with fresh wounds on my hand, there was no time for a break my turn to face the sting of the bullet ant had arrived. Bullet ants are one of the largest ants in the world and are legendary for having the most painful sting in the insect kingdom, rating above cow killers, tarantula hawks, and the infamous murder hornet. It has also earned itself the nickname the 24-hour ant because the excruciating pain from a single sting can last an entire day. Let's let these... Ants back off into their nest. There you go. Round one of the most painful ant showdown is in the books. I 
I've got some battle wounds to show for it. Now it's time for round two, the sting of the bullet ant. I've got some good news and bad news. The bad news is, for me, this is definitely gonna happen. The good news is, we don't have to go very far to find our bullet ant. Literally on top of the leaf cutter ant colony, there is a bullet ant nest right here at this tree. I have never seen this before. All I have to do, give a little knock on the door, check this out. Oh, here they come. Can you get your microphone close? Hear them making their battle cry. Oh, they're angry. We just need one ant. Here we go. Oh, we got two on there. Oh, let's see if we can get one to climb off in it. All right, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, geez, that was close. All right, we've got an ant. And just like that, we are ready for round two. The time has come for the second contender. Those leaf cutter ants meant business, but those are flesh wounds. This is venom. Let's get the bullet ant out of the jar so we can get a closer look at exactly what we're dealing with here. All right, I'm just gonna let it crawl onto the table. Got it. Oh man, my heart is definitely racing a million miles a second right now. These ants are not to be taken lightly. Some ants just bite, but some ants sting. And this is the king of sting. Oh. Ah, did you see that? Jumped right off the forceps. Let me grab it again. Be good, be good. Okay, got a better grip that time. Oh, oh man, okay. He looks it's angry. Very angry. The Panera toxin in this ant stinger is ranked number one on Dr. Schmidt's sting index. And I'm not just gonna take one sting today. I'm about to take it on for 60 seconds. Oh man, this is gonna be, this is gonna be painful. Please do not attempt to try this at home. 60 seconds on the clock. Here we go, camera's rolling, camera's rolling, camera's rolling. I'm Mark Vins, and I'm about to enter the sting zone for 60 seconds with the bullet ant. On three, one, two, Three. Ah! Oh, oh, you see the stinger going in? Oh, I got that shot. Oh. Ah! Oh. Oh. Oh, that hurts. Oh, the stinger's still in me. Ah! Ooh. Ah! Ah! Mark, we gotta stop the clock every time you take it. All right. It. Oh, man, that just, it really burns. You have to hold it on there for oh. a whole minute. Oh. Oh, yeah. You can see the stinger going in the skin. You see that? Oh man, and he's just like working it in. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. 30 seconds. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Oh, the stinger's in there. He's just pumping me full of venom. Mark, you okay? Ah. Ah, no. Ah, it's hot. Ah. Ah. Oh yeah, you see the stinger going in and out? Ah, it's getting me again. Ah. What's the time? What's the time? What's the time? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, time. Oh. oh, I'm bleeding where the stinger is in. You guys see that? Oh. oh, dude, I'm telling you what, that is searing pain. My arm is on fire right now. Uh, uh. Describe the pain. It's uh, hot. It's hot, it's pulsating, it's electric. My skin is just like rippling with pain. You can see it drew blood. The stinger was in the skin just pumping me full of venom. Did you see it pull out there at the end? That was insane. They say it's like being shot by a bullet. This pain is rumored to last for like 24 hours. The sting is getting worse by the second. So which one's Gosh. worse? The acute pain of those leaf cutter amp jaws really hurt. This is different though. This is getting worse. Like you can see the redness is starting to really flare up. Like look at all the capillaries dilating there. Wow. In terms of the showdown, I don't know. What do you guys think? What you, would you think was worse? Just based on your pain reaction and the bites, I think leaf cutter amp. I mean, this was no walk in the park. This did not feel good for a second, but those leaf cutter ants, that is something I never, ever want to go through ever again, if I can help it. All right, guys, it's getting dark. Let's release the ant and head back to camp. As we made our way back to the nest to release the bullet ant, the swelling and searing pain increased dramatically. 
and I was starting to think that I had declared the winner of this ant vs. ant face-off far too soon. All night long, my arm was riddled in bone-crushing pain, and it took everything I had to hold back from screaming out in agony. I maybe got like two hours of sleep last night, guys. This bullet ant sting just kept me up all night long. For what it's worth, I feel my experience has proved the rumors true. The pain became much more intense before getting any better. And the visual swelling and itching alone were shocking. It took multiple days for all of my symptoms to subside. And if it were up to me, I'd rename this species the 48-hour ant. So I had to do the right thing and return to the table. Well, I for one am never too proud to admit when I am wrong. And in terms of yesterday's verdict as to which was worse, I was wrong. Look at my arm, guys. I am in so much pain right now. And look at this. The redness extends all the way from my wrist to my, almost my elbow. It truly feels like a broken bone. Wait, wait, Mark. So are you, are you changing the winner from yesterday? <sighs> no question. No question. I have never felt pain like this from a sting. This is the worst sting I have ever experienced in my life. The bullet ant is the true king of pain of this rainforest. It's time to get down to business. It's time to find out if this flying bullet ant can sting. Here we go. Let's see if we can grab hold without it flying away. I know I say this all the time with ants, but it's unbelievable how strong they are. Oh no, 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 don't fly, don't fly, don't fly. Oh no. Angry. This bullet ant does not want to be in these forceps. Okay, I got a good hold. All right, here we go. Oh, it's afraid we're gonna lose our flying bullet ant. They have wings for a reason. Got that shot? Got it. All right, here we go. I'm Mark Vins, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with a flying bullet ant. On three. One, two, three. I can't feel it. Ah! Mmm! There's something in my Oh yeah, stinger's in, stinger's in. Yep, yep, it's a queen. Mm. Mm. Oh, do you see the stinger in there? Definitely a queen. Got a young queen, definitely not a male. What's that feel like? Ah, burns, all right, all right, all right. <sighs> definitely not doing it for 60 seconds again. Yeah, whoo, man. Whew. All right, Mark? Yeah. Huh, I tell you what, that burns, but not as bad, oddly enough. Definitely not as bad as yesterday. Uh, Let me put her back in the container. Thank you, thank you, oh man. Definitely a female, for sure. You could see there's already raised, I could feel, I could feel the burning. There's already some raised, but not as bad. There's some, there's some marks there, but I'm gonna have to give it a little bit to see if the venom really kicks in. I mean, clearly that's what the bullet ant looked like from yesterday. That is uh, just over 24 hours. You can see just how swollen my arm is from yesterday and it's hot and tight. It's almost like swelling up like a hot dog about to explode. But yeah, you can see right there, you see that? We definitely have some sting marks, but a much, much more mild venom. Like, significantly less painful. I would recommend doing it. Don't get me wrong, this isn't good. It's, it's not enjoyable, but it is certainly not as painful as the bullet ant we all know. And it right there. We got one! Holy, oh. We were literally just about to give up. It's not a big one, but that is a panda ant, baby! Let's go, yes! Oh. Got one. But our luck wouldn't end there. As we prepped our presentation, 
and captured the first ever video of this fuzzy little panda, something even more incredible happened. Got another one. Hold on, hold on. Get in there, get in there. Go. They're so fast. So fast, this one's kind of small. I don't want to get stunned. Uh -uh. Not yet, anyway. They don't just look like pandas for our amusement. They've developed this coloration to ward off predators to say, hey, I pack a punch. I have a lot of defenses and you will regret it. Now let's talk about another defense mechanism. Let's bring the microphone in there real close. You hear that? That's called stridulation, which is a high frequency warning pitch that these insects are able to emit. And we're not just boosting the sound. This insect's actually noisy. I can hear it. Look at that. Swinging the abdomen already. Might get to see an appearance of that. Oh, that stinger's coming out. Compared to body size, that is a super long stinger. It will have no problem popping a stinger through my skin. Now, remember when I said earlier, this is probably the first 4K footage of a panda ant. Let me also tell you, this is about to be the first ever documented sting of this species. No one has taken a sting of the panda ant. Going into the sting zone with the panda ant is truly the great unknown. I have no idea what kind of reaction I'm going to have. So we brought a couple of emergency remedies. Of course, our satellite phone. If I go into any kind of anaphylactic shock, we will use this for emergency distress calls. In addition to that, I always bring a first aid trauma kit. And in this trauma kit, I always have an EpiPen. That's pretty much our only remedies if this sting gets really bad. For the first time ever, it's time to go flesh the stinger with the panda ant. That stinger is flying. That is a very big stinger. I would say the stinger is the entire length of the lower abdomen. All right, it is time. I'm Mark Vins, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the panda ant. Here we go to the great unknown of the world of stings. One, two, three. Yep, stinger's in, stinger's in. Ah. Ah. Oh, I dropped her. Where'd she go? Oh, it's here. Definitely stung me. Uh, Maybe I'm the wrong. Yeah, let me see. Uh, they're so fast. And they blend in perfectly. Where, she can't have gotten far. Let me look around. Yeah, I'm gonna look over here. All right, yeah, yeah, keep looking, keep looking. Oh no! Oh! Huh, well, unfortunately, I dropped the ant. She definitely gave me a sting before hightailing it out of here. We've got two distinct sting marks. I would say it's probably similar to that of a hornet, but luckily for us, we have one more ant. In fact, this is the one that looks most like a panda. So, it's time to see if the world's smallest panda packs a potent punch. Gotta get a good grip. I know it looks easy, but it is so hard to get a good grip on these tiny little panda ants. There we go. Okay, the stinger's going. One, two, three. Ah! Ooh, yeah, okay. Definitely took a really good sting and a bite. See this panda's jaws locked into me? Ah, I think this panda ant's bite is worse than its sting. Ah, definitely getting little micro stings. This tiny panda ant just might not be big enough to deliver a full punch. Okay. Well, you can see here, I got two really good stings from the ant that got away. And then I probably have, I don't know, like a dozen little micro stings. I left it there for a while, but there, were, there was one or two really good ones. Oh my God, there it is. Got it. We just found the first panda ant. Wow, I cannot believe it. What am I supposed to do with you? You ran away and now you're back. Should we try to get like another wallop? All right, well, gonna go for another sting. I don't know if I got a full one that first time around. On three, one, two, three. Yep, 
got me. Ah, bite me. Ah, and stinging me. Got a good one there. Ah. Okay, yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. Really not a remarkable sting, even though we're getting a lot of redness and little micro swelling around those sting sites. This might have been the world's cutest sting. The sting of the tiny panda ant is no match for its growl. All right, let's let this little panda back into the wild. All right, got our forceps, small container. Now we just need the bulldog ant itself. I'm going to lightly disturb the entryway. Oh, here we go, got him already. That makes me nervous. The ants are starting to swarm. You see how big they are? This is like a volcano of ants. Oh, gosh, almost got me. They're getting on me. All right, I'm gonna have to get our ant fast. Here we go. I got it. Yes. Oh, man. Oh. There we go. We've got one. That is a really good sized bulldog ant. It's starting to swarm a little too much to hang out here. Let's go reposition away from the nest so we can get a closer look at one of the scariest ants in the world. Australians fear these massive ants because they attack in swarms and without warning. If you accidentally disturb them, you can be covered in just a matter of seconds. Bulldog ants can be found all over Australia and often build nests in people's yards and local parks, which is exactly where we discovered these ants. This particular species is one of the largest, growing to over one inch in length. And of course, for this sting test, we wanted the big dogs, so we could compare how they rank against the legendary bullet ants of South and Central America. Now it's time to find out which is worse. All right, guys, it is officially go time with the bulldog ant. Look at the size of this insect. Size-wise, I would definitely say it gives the bullet ant a run for its money, but appearance? This ant is second to none when it comes to intimidation factor. But before I test the might of this insect, let's get it out of the container and take an even closer look at those jaws and its stinger. All right, here we go. Oh, it's already jumping out. I wanna be very careful right now. And they are so aggressive. Look at that, it's already biting on the forceps. I'm just gonna try my best to get a good grip. And I'm getting nervous, gosh, hang on. All right, I gotta get it on the ground. Here we go. Unlike other ants, they don't really react to scents and pheromones, they react to sight. So anytime I try to grab it with the forceps, it sees that I'm coming. There we go. Okay, perfect hold. There it is. No animal has been requested for a sting test more than the bulldog ant in the history of Brave Wilderness. And now I can see why. Wow, I have never seen a more terrifying looking ant in my entire life. Let's start at the top. Look at the size of those mandibles. They are like serrated shears attached to these bulbous eyes, almost like a vice grip, just ready to snap and pinch on to anything it can touch. Look at the eyes of the ant. You can really see how much it reacts by using its sight. Look how it turns its head to the different ways that I position my finger around it. And then, of course, before we get to the stinger, I just have to say, look at the size of those legs because they are visually stimulated. They use their extremely long legs to extend quickly and flick themselves onto any would-be predator, earning them the name jumping jacks. And then of course, we can see the stinger flying already from the abdomen. Like other stinging insects, only the females can sting. This is actually a century or a soldier ant tasked with guarding the front of the nest. And you saw with just the slightest disruption, a fleet of soldiers came flying out of the nest ready for attack. They got all over my boots and nearly took a sting right away, but we saved the sting for this moment in the video. The sting of this ant is said to be one of the most painful experiences that you can get from any animal here on the continent of Australia. Some even argue in the world. The biggest difference between bullet and bulldog ant stings are the toxins they use. Bullet ants use a Panera toxin, which is slow building and can last for days, where bulldog ants use formic acid that causes instant pain. And when these ants swarm and cover people by the dozens, they have the ability to take down a fully grown adult. Holy cow, she's looking at me. Oh my gosh, look at that stinger go. I have a feeling this is going to hurt. I'm Mark Vins, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with one of the most terrifying ants on the planet the Australian Bulldog Ant. On three. One, two, three. Ah, yeah, ah. Oh my God, you see the stinger going in? Ah, yeah, that's a 
could stink. Ah! Oh. Yeah. Oh! Ah, it's really got its stinger in me. Ah, look at it, stingers in. Ah! Ah! Back in the jar. Oh, that hurts. All right. Ah. Oh my gosh. Woo. Oh. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That burns. That is a super, super intense sting. Oh my gosh. Okay, hang on. Let me compose myself. Oh. Oh man. That was like instant fire underneath my skin. So much more like potent than the bullet ant. But I could tell you this, the bite was really nothing. Didn't really get a good grip on with those jaws, but it certainly got its stinger stuck in my arm. And it, it's getting a little dry now. Hang on, my adrenaline's kicking in. You okay, Mark? Yeah, I'm all right, I think. Uh, all right. Jeez, it's also hot out all of a sudden. All right. I think I'm good to continue on. All right. Oh, you bulldog. Oh, all right. See that stinger sight? Got a little bit of a acute swelling, maybe some residual bumps, and it definitely burns. I would say the initial onset of the sting, it was like a lightning bolt, way more intense than a bullet ant. But and I can tell you it's already starting to subside a bit. But wow, that is a rip shot of pain. Man. <clears throat> really getting dry mouth, guys. The uh Is your EpiPen in your backpack? It, it is. I've got my EpiPen, don't worry. Yeah, I don't, I don't need it yet, but got to monitor my, make sure my tongue's not swelling up or anything. But holy cow, that sting is like a hammer. It's like somebody literally just took a hammer and went wham, instantaneous pain. Not even a small delay. As soon as the stinger touched my skin, boom, it was on. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that one because I don't think I want to go arm to stinger again with that intimidating little ant. Now I am not out of the woods by any means. I'm going to continue to monitor this sting over the next two days. I can tell you this, a single sting from a bulldog ant so far does not compete with the bullet ant. Unlike the bullet ant that just started to build and build and build, I'm starting to really get past that initial wave of pain. And now I'm just really more dealing with the, uh, the after effects of adrenaline, starting to get that like queasy stomach, cold sweat, and just simple nausea that I usually get after taking a sting. But a swarm of bulldog ants, I would estimate could take even the most pain tolerant person to their knees. All right, I think I'm gonna need some ice. Ugh. Sure enough, things got a lot worse. Just hours later, the redness and inflammation flared up and were joined by an intense itching that lasted for several days. Compared to other stings I've taken, this one was a sleeper that turned into a monster. Bulldog ant stings are known for their instant pain, so I was shocked when I was hit with these delayed reactions. While I did not experience the 24 hours of deep bone break pain that the bullet ant gave me. Ah! Oh, oh, that hurts. Oh, that is searing pain. This was far from an ordinary walk in the park. In fact, as of the editing of this video, my arm is still discolored and healing. If I were to have been swarmed and stung like the stick in the beginning of the video, it would have been a very bad situation. But now I know exactly why Australians go so far out of their way to avoid the jumping tear that is the bulldog ant. Yikes. Whoa, we got a rattlesnake right there. You see it coiled up? Right there. 
back up a little bit, guys. That is a Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. Now, it is not a big one. This is a juvenile, but it is still capable of inflicting a very serious bite. You can use a snake hook to move snakes out of our way, just like this. Let the snake go, and we keep searching for spiders. Yes. It's a great sign that we're seeing all these venomous creatures out on the hunt. This desert is coming alive. Put a scorpion right at your foot. Look at this. Desert hairy scorpion right there. Let's see if I can grab it. Best way to do this is just to grab right at the top knuckle so it can't sting me. Let's see if we can get him to calm down. Stay, stay buddy, stay buddy. Come on. There we go, that's good. Oh. Got him. Oh yeah, he's pinching me. All right, here we go. Let's see, show you what we got here. That is a pretty good size giant desert hairy scorpion, the largest species of scorpion in the United States. Luckily, I've got a good grip on its stinger there, but you can see there's even a little bit of venom starting to come out of the tip of it. If you don't grab these guys correctly, they will give you a pretty good pop. You can see why they call them the desert hairy. Look at all the hairs all over its body. It doesn't get much cooler than these large scorpions. All right, let's put them back and keep looking for those tarantulas. Scorpions and tarantulas are out here hunting the same food. I have a feeling we're closing in on our giant spider. Oh, I got a spider right there. Let's go. All right, I got my container. Let's see if we can get a catch. Okay, it's holes right here. I'm going to need to move in carefully. That is a big male. Lost it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Maybe I can coax it back out. Ah, lost it. Wait, hang on. It's still there. I got it back. I got it back. Snake hook is coming in clutch. Coax it this direction. See it rearing its abdomen up. Okay, oh, just bit the snake hook. Here we go, guys. Got it. Got it. Here we go. Woo! Oh, buddy. That is a good one. Big male desert blonde tarantula. After a little bit of searching and a little bit of luck that we brought the snake hook, we got ourselves our tarantula for the bite test. All right, I'll take you back in. Let's go, guys. Yes! As fate would have it, as we were heading back to start setting up for the bite test, we saw an even bigger spider. Oh, another tarantula. This one looks bigger. Oh yeah, okay. Let's try to catch this one too. All right, I don't know how close it is to its hole, but I'm gonna go in for the catch. Here we go. Holy cow, that is a huge freaking spider, guys. Wow. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Ho, 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 ho! Ho, that is the specimen we have been after. That is a truly huge tarantula. I did not expect this. Not one, but two huge desert blonde tarantulas. What we have here are a male and a female. And unfortunately for me, I think this video just turned from a tarantula bite test to a tarantula bite comparison. And I'm sure you are as curious as I am which of these two spiders has the more painful bite. It's time to find out. I am definitely nervous. Oh man. Oh, oh my goodness. Two full grown desert blonde tarantulas. And the table is now set for the ultimate spider bite test here in the Sonora Desert. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. What I'm about to do is a bad idea. Please do not attempt to recreate what you're about to see in this video. We have two tarantulas here in front of us. We have a male and the female, which we found unexpectedly. I think it is worth doing a bite test comparison to see which bite is more ferocious because these spiders live very different lives from each other. Females actually live for a lot longer. We're talking 25 years for a female tarantula and only five to 10 years for a male. Females tend to bunker down. They stay a lot more localized to their nests where the males are much more nomadic and predatory. 
I have a suspicion that we have a very different bite profile to these two spiders, and we are going to put that to the ultimate test. Let's take a closer look at Arizona's largest spider. Ladies first. In order to get some really good footage of the spider, I'm going to move it into this glass dome. And of course, we don't want our spider to get away. All right, delicate little procedure here. Wow. There we go, perfect, perfect, perfect transfer. Oh my goodness. The fangs on these spiders are enormous. It's not just going to be the venom that I'm up against today. We're talking actual puncture wounds from fangs that large. In terms of what they're out here hunting and eating, pretty much anything that they can grapple onto. They are very strong spiders. And of course, possessing those large fangs, they could subdue a variety of prey, even small lizards would be a good meal for a spider this size. The females tend to be a little bit bigger than the males. They are called a desert blonde tarantula, predominantly because you can see those hairs and just how blonde they are in the middle. But that is a full grown desert blonde tarantula. The best way to probably go about doing this is for me to grab it by its carapace, the top of the head of the spider, and I'm gonna try to pin it, grab it, and then I'll be able to show you the fangs and of course inflict the bite right here on my thumb. All right, um, brought a couple things with me today. I have a large pair of tweezers. Of course, we always bring first aid kit. The thing I need the most is the EpiPen. The worst outcome that can happen besides the pain that I'm about to experience is an allergic reaction. I think it's time to take the first of two bites from a tarantula. Okay, here we go. Now the females are known for being a little more docile than the males. Beyond, oh, easy girl, easy girl. Back, back, back. So you see how it's rearing its abdomen up right there? Beyond their capability to inflict bites, they also possess another defense mechanism, which is to flick the hairs off their abdomen. Females are rumored to be less aggressive, but this one looks ready to bite. And what I'm trying to do right now is to get a good hold on the carapace. This is the safest way for me to hold it for both me and the tarantula. There we go. Oh, geez. Okay. That was, that, that made my heart go. Okay. The spider just wants to come right at me. Oh my gosh. Did you hear that? That is the sound of spider fangs scraping the table. Okay. Look at the size of those fangs. And their fangs are retractable, just like a snake. And they are thick. We're talking some very large fangs. Those are going to pop holes in my skin for sure. <sighs> gotta get a lot of nerve to do this. Okay, I've got a good grip on the spider. I'm gonna go for it on three. I'm Mark Vins, and I'm about to take a bite from Arizona's largest spider, the desert blonde tarantula. On three. One. So nervous. Two. Three. Spider's fangs are on my skin. Ah! Yep, got me. You can see there's a little blood right there. Only popped one fang through. I don't think I gotta take a better bite, guys. It wasn't a good enough bite. All right, I'm gonna do one more. Ready? On three. One, two, three. Ah! Yeah, that, that time it got me. That time it got me good. Oh my God. That freaked me out. Oh my gosh. Okay. Hang on, let me get the spider back. Get back in there, girl. Get back in there. Ah. Uh, yeah, see right there. See that? <sighs> Definitely burns. Oh my gosh, my adrenaline is like firing right now, guys. I, I feel like my soul uh. just jumped out of my body. That is the freak most freaked out I've been around an animal. Uh. 
and it definitely burns. Oh man. My neck, okay? yeah. My neck is like seized up. It's like I've got a cramp right here. I don't know if it's from the bite or if it's from just the nerves and the tension. Oh my gosh. I think it's nerves. I, I don't think it's from the venom. <sighs> definitely burns. It's, a, it's definitely a burning sensation. I had to really try hard to get that spider to bite me. I want to point that out, that this, this spider did not want to bite, but that was not an aggression bite, for sure. Okay, I think I'm, I'm good enough to do another bite. I think it's time to bring in the second tarantula and see if the male can inflict a more aggressive bite wound, which I have a feeling that's gonna happen. Males are known to be more aggressive, and that's why I wanted to do a bite test here. Much darker in coloration than the female, too. Not looking forward to this. And my hand still burns from that first bite. Okay, come here. Come here, you. Come here, you. Okay. Got a pin. Oh my gosh. Way stronger. Way stronger. Way more aggressive. Look at it attacking. Oh boy, that was tough. Okay, there you have it. The male desert blonde tarantula. Here are the fangs. You can see just as terrifying as the female spider. You can see there's even venom on these. Okay, on three. I'm about to take my second bite, this time from a male and much more aggressive desert blonde tarantula. On three. One, two, three. I'm just waiting for the bite to come. You see, he does not want to bite me. It's not as angry as the female. No. Big reaction is that these, these animals do not want to bite me. So while we've given this spider plenty of opportunity to inflict a bite, you can see it really has no intent to do me any harm. And frankly, it should be a lot more afraid of me than I am of it. So I hope after watching this video, we all have learned some important lessons about Arizona's largest spider. Even though these spiders are large and admittedly pretty creepy, we really have no reason to fear them. And honestly, their venom isn't that strong because spiders this large tend to use their strength to overtake their prey. They don't want to bite you. And even if they do, it's really not that bad. All right, let's let our spiders back off into the desert. If you've ever wanted to see a human pincushion, stick around for the next few minutes. This is about to get crazy. Alrighty, folks. Looks like we got ourselves a good old fashioned desert showdown. No sense poking around. Let's get right to it. Two minutes on the clock. Let's give him some spins for good luck. And he's off. Ah! Ah! Oh, that, man. Straight, straight. To your right, to your right. Good, good. To, oh. to your left, Mark. To your left. Ah! Oh, God. Straight. Yep, straight ahead. Oh, watch out for that one by your leg. Ah! Ah! Back up just a little bit and then go straight. Ah! There you go. Oh, I can't see a thing. Oh. There we go. We got a little bit of a clearing. Time here. check. Time check. Uh, you got about a minute thirty. Ah! Oh. Ah! Watch your chin. Ah! Which way? Oh! Oh man! Back up! Back up! Back up! Oh! Oh! oh. Okay, Mark. We gotta keep going. Right. To your right. To your right. To right. To your right. What is that? That's another one, is it? No. Ah! Straight ahead. Ah. Yep. Side step. Step with your left leg forward. Yeah, just go straight, Mark. Just go straight. Oh my gosh, how far am I? Halfway through, Mark. Come on. Don't get too close to those. Keep oh shuffling. God. There you go. My, my leg's seizing up, man. Well, we're in between two very sharp plants. So what we need to do. Yep. You just turned yourself perfect. Okay. Go forward. There's a bush right below you, though. Gosh, Step over that with your left leg. There you go. I guess why I do the right thing. I can't. Yeah. I'm just trying to feel for bushes shuffle, with my feet. Shuffle. There you go. Am I close? You're close. We got about 30 uh, seconds though. We got to make it. 
I'm like terrified to finish this, Corey, help me. All right, this part's ah. tight. Ah! Dude, I'm stuck. I'm freaking stuck. Ah! Ooh, he's gonna feel that one for a while. Let's slow that down real nice like and see an instant replay. Okay, you just have to move forward. Ah! 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 You're right there. It's right in front of you. Oh, you're I feel the table. Ah! Oh, got the cake. Yes! Victory! Oh, dude, you made it with like two seconds to spare. All right. I need you guys to remove the goggles because I'm like, I can't move right now. Corey, I'm gonna need your help. How bad is it? How bad is it? It's bad, dude. Oh! Oh my goodness. Was it worth it, man? Let Take me a bite. Let me see. You made mm. it this far. Oh. Oh, it makes it better. That certainly makes it better. Oh yeah, that's a good take. Okay. We gotta get these out. <laughs> All right, I really need the stuff off the back. I'm just gonna keep going, man. Ready? Okay. <laughs> Keep going, man. Had you ever thought oh. of starting over? Starting One, two, three. Again. Oh. Yep, that was the worst one. <clears throat> Tell you guys what, I am so happy I wore a cup. Okay, so here we go. Now, as you can see, I only have the Choya left that are on the front side of my body. And this is the point of the video where I would like to attempt to show you how if this happens to you, hopefully it doesn't, but if it does, how to properly remove these Choya with the least amount of pain possible. The number one thing you want to avoid doing, this is like rule number one with Choya, you never, ever, under any circumstances, try to remove Choya with your hands. Even if you have gloves on, as you can see, these things go through boots, they go through fabric. So don't use your hands, you want to use a tool. Now, what tool should you use? Well, I'm glad you asked. Corey, my comb, please. Thank you, sir. No, I'm just kidding. It's not for my hair, but one of the best tools for removing the Choya is a large tooth comb just like this. Work the teeth under the spines until you grab the choy. You could kind of see I've got the fruit pulling up now. Ready? One, two, three. Whew. Okay, that's one. Oh, this one's gonna hurt. Go! Oh, yeah! Yes! Yes, sir, that hurts. Okay, so the comb, it does the trick. But let's be honest, if you're out here hiking the Sonoran Desert, pretty good chance you don't have a large tooth comb in your kit. But what you might have is something like this. The Brave Wilderness team never leaves home without a good multi-tool, and I highly recommend you do the same. So you wanna open two points of contact, just like the comb, wiggle it in there, see how I have good purchase. Ah, that hurts. One, two, three. Velvet cake, velvet cake, velvet cake. Uh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Okay, I think I need to get this one off. This is a good opportunity for me to show you yet another technique. Corey, sticks please. Thank you, sir. Now, if you can't find any sticks, just look harder, because you definitely don't want to use your hands, like I said before. What you want to do is take the sticks, Work them underneath, get purchase, and then same as the other ones. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Just like that. But I gotta be honest with you. 
I much prefer the multi-tool, so I'm going back. Okay. This is gonna be a good one. <laughs> and the final, Choya. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Sonoran Desert and all of its spiky inhabitants and how to remove the pesky Choya should you ever have an encounter of your own. Oh, got one right there. You see it? Oh yeah, that's a desert hairy. Oh, it's a big one too. Look at that. Oh, check that out. Just gotta commit. Ah, oh yeah. Oh, they do have a pretty decent pinch, I will say. Check that out. Desert hairy scorpion, the largest scorpion out here in the Sonoran Desert. But what's interesting is, although it is the largest, it has probably the weakest venom. So if you're stung, by a desert hairy scorpion. For most people, it's nothing more than a bee sting. However, that being said, some people are allergic, so you definitely do not want to be stung by any scorpion if you can help it. Now, I did take a couple of good pinches. A scorpion this size will give you a pretty solid pinch, so you definitely don't want to pick one up if you see it out here in the desert. I'm only doing it so I can get it close to the cameras and you guys can see just how illuminated they become under a black light. Is that showing up on camera? Yeah, it looks cool. Awesome. Okay, well, let's fire up the lights, let this scorpion go, and keep heading toward the water. I think you can tell by all these bugs, we're starting to get close. Okay, this is perfect. There was once water here, which means, oh yeah. We have found the water, folks. 20 yards ahead lives the creature that we've been searching for. Let's go. Oh, I think I got one. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna leave my pack here and I'm heading in. Time to get hands on with a zombie toad. Ha Got him. Nice pet. Oh yeah. That is perfect. That's definitely the toad we've been after. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The spade foot toad, AKA the zombie toad. This creature actually lives underground. They use this specialized appendage. See that little black speck? That is actually why it gets the name spade foot because that little black speck is actually very rigid it's made out of keratin the same material as my fingernail and it uses this spade to dig itself back into the soil for another year of hibernation now when it does hibernate it almost completely dehydrates itself and slows down all of its life processes remaining in a state of limbo for months and months and months while hiding underground in suspended animation, the spadefoot toad is a solitary creature. But when the rainfall finally returns during the monsoon season, the toad will rehydrate itself and emerge from the ground to breed and lay eggs in shallow pools of water. This is the primary reason they return to life. But they will return to the ground shortly thereafter for another year as a nearly lifeless organism. Now, if you take a closer look, you'll see there's another few interesting traits about this species of toad. It lacks the traditional paratoid glands right behind the eyes that you'll see on the Colorado River toad. Also, it has vertical pupils. I don't know if you can get a tight shot in there at the eye, almost like a cat's eye. And you can see the skin, not quite as bumpy. Got him. <laughs> Having to play catch tonight with this toad. You can see the skin is not quite as bumpy as your ordinary toad. And in fact, I would say the spadefoot toad resembles more of a frog than a species of toad. But I think this is so cool to finally get to feature this nearly immortal creature that can dig down into the desert sands and live its whole year without water, only to resurrect itself when the rains return. Wow. Now, I know a lot of you at home are probably looking at this toad thinking to yourself, 
That toad's pretty cute. If I was ever in the Sonoran Desert and I found a toad like that, I bet it would make a pretty good pet. Well, the truth is, these animals live a very specialized life and therefore need a very specialized habitat and do not make good pets. Lizard, lizard, right here. You guys rolling? Whoa, check that out. Look at that. This is a shingleback. Wow, what an amazingly cool lizard this is. Let me see if I can pick it up carefully. Oh, don't want to get bit. Don't want to get bit by this guy. Hang on. Look at that defensive display. Whoa, got a lunge. Oh, he is, he is a feisty one. Oh, do you hear that? Hear that hiss? Got him. All right. Here, let's come on in close, guys. That, that is a really good look at their defensive display. I was hoping we would come across one of these lizards here in Western Australia. And there it is, our first reptile of the trip, the shingleback. The first thing you notice about this animal is that tongue sticking out, flaring its tongue out saying, hey, I'm feisty and I will give you a tremendous bite if you get any closer. You can see the size of those mandibles and it does have razor sharp teeth. Let's talk about its name. The shingleback gets its name because of its armored plating. Look at those scales. They are raised up and very thick, like an armored little tank. Here, Andrew, like put your, feel the back of that. Whoa, he's super tough. He's super tough. An extra tough lizard that utilizes its scales to ward off predators. Those armored scales would act like a plate, a barrier to hopefully protect it long enough to scurry away. Now, some people would call this a shingleback. Others would know it as a bobtail. It gets the name bobtail because of this little nubby tail on the back, which has a couple of purposes. The first purpose is it's a defense mechanism because it's a false head. So if there's a predator like a hawk or a snake that comes in and tries to eat this lizard, it might accidentally go for the wrong side because it looks a lot like its head. And that would be good for this lizard because it would give it a chance to get away. Now, another purpose for that bobtail is it's a fat store. Being out here in the desert, water is scarce and energy can be scarce. So certain times of the season, while this lizard can be hibernating, it relies on the fat stores in its tail to survive. Now, these lizards are a species of blue tongue skink. And while their tongue isn't as bright as their cousin, the Eastern blue tongue, I think their armored appearance makes them the coolest of these spunky Australian lizards. I wanna be very clear, I do not wanna take a bite from this lizard. It has very strong jaws because it is an omnivore. It feasts on a diet of snails and beetles, so it requires strong mandibles to crush those shells up. And I don't want you to crush my finger, right? Because we're gonna be friends, because I'm gonna help you out too before the end of this video. These lizards can be found while road cruising out here in the outback. They are often victims of car strikes because they like to stay on the road to get warmth. They are ectothermic, so we're gonna help you cross the road, buddy, don't worry. But we're also gonna help you out with something else. Now, one of the things that we can do is to remove some of its parasites. You see that right there? Let's get a tight shot. These reptiles are known to be covered in ticks. So anytime we encounter an animal with visible parasites like leeches, barnacles, or ticks, we always do our best to try to remove them if possible. In this case, removing these pesky blood suckers will cause no pain to the lizard and will certainly help its chances for survival in this harsh desert environment. This is a little bit risky right here. Getting my fingers super close to those jaws. Got him. Oh, oh no. There's more. Ugh. Hang on, buddy. We'll help you out here. Ugh, guys, there are so many ticks on this lizard. That one was in its left ear, and the ticks do like to go for the softer part, so ears and in between the scales. I'm gonna try to try this one out. Yeah. Gotcha. There we go. And there is another tick. See, that's what friends do. We remove ticks from each other's ears. You would do the same for me, wouldn't you? Yeah. Now this is not a tick that would burrow into a human, but they can actually get about 20 times this size by engorging themselves with the blood of these reptiles. I've actually found a tick on another shingleback before that was the size of a grape. Ugh. Disgusting, right? Ugh. We don't want ticks. I think I got the main ticks off of you.
Got him. Got him. They are all stuffed in his ear. How did you get so many ticks inside your ear? Oh gosh, guys. There are so many ticks in this lizard's ear. You guys are gonna wanna get a shot of this, it's gross. Ugh, look at that. Dude, where have you been? No more ticks. I think I got them all out of that ear. I'm sure that feels a lot better, huh, buddy? Now you can hear again. All right, the sun's coming back out. He's getting a little feisty. Uh, let's see if we can get another look at that iconic defense display, that tongue bleh, splaying out to warn any predator off. All right, I'm gonna try to put him down carefully, not take a bite. Ready? You guys got your shot? One, two, three. See that, see that, see that defense display? Oh, he is fast. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're still friends, don't worry. Oh. He looks angry. oh man, they are feisty when they want to be. Oh, not messing around, are you, buddy? Ah, too close. Gosh, he bit down hard. Oh, guys, look at that bite. We're trying to get the thumbnail and I was using my hat to shade, and he's totally bit my hat. Oh my gosh, it is strong. I don't think it's gonna let go. You would not want to take a bite from this lizard. Holy smokes, it is just bulldog grip. Let's see if I can just put it down if it'll let go. Give me my hat. Who do you think you are, Jake Paul? Got my hat? Can I have my hat back, sir? Please? Are you kidding me? Thank you. Thank you for my hat back. Okay. Wow. You would not want to take a bite from this lizard. It is a bulldog. That is a bite that you would not soon forget. We found the desert horned lizard, a baby, a juvenile. I'm gonna grab him. Ready, Corey? One, two, three. Got him. Hello. Look how beautiful he is. Okay, here, yeah. let's get down out of the wind. This is a good spot. Oh yeah, definitely much more out of the wind. This is a juvenile desert horned lizard. Look at how cute this little reptile is. Let's tell everybody at home all about you. Now, although their appearance is quite spiky and ominous, I can tell you that all of those are nothing more than modified scales. The only real sharp part is that crown around their head, and even those are very dull. Now the crown of horns on the desert horned lizard is actually a lot shorter than that of the regal horned lizard. You may have seen our past videos in Arizona where we found the regal horned lizard. This is a different species, but it is one of three horned lizard species that has that defense mechanism where they can project blood out of their eyes. Notice this horned lizard did not do that. They really have to be agitated to display that defense mechanism. And what that is, it's actually pretty bizarre. These lizards have two veins that connect to their ocular sinuses, and they have the ability to constrict those veins to stop the blood flow from the heart. Now, when that pressure builds up, they can release it in such a force that it breaks through their membrane and shoots out up to four feet. Wow! Oh, look at that cute little tail. Cool pattern on that tail. Very flat for a horned lizard but I just love the coloration of the desert horn lizard. Those beautiful whitish grays and browns, almost a green hue, they have the outer line of orange and tan on the cheeks. Man, you are so cool looking. And I can't believe we found you underneath a creosote bush that we were talking about just earlier is a great place for smaller animals to take refuge in wind and sun. And like I mentioned earlier, this is just a hatchling, a tiny desert horn lizard. But if it's lucky enough, it'll grow up to be three to five inches in length, which is about three times your size. So you've got a long way to go, buddy, but we're gonna put you right back where we found you so you can get well on your way, right? Right.